this is actually a really interesting viewpoint to view the runout zones for rock falls from Glacier Point. Usually we're looking either across the valley over at Glacier Point or we're down at the bottom looking up and those are valuable views as well but this is really useful to be able to be up here and look down and from right here I can see runout zones for about five different rockfall events that have occurred you know in the past decade or so. The cliffs are eroding very slowly grain by grain all the time but when suddenly you know a piece of the cliff that's 200 feet wide and 100 feet tall and 20 feet thick just spalls off the cliff and falls a thousand feet to the valley floor and breaks up into all these pieces you know that's a really different style of erosion. When we look around Yosemite Valley we see abundant evidence that rock falls have been occurring here for thousands of years. Yosemite Valley is a, a glacially carved canyon and since glaciers retreated about 15,000 years ago, rockfall has been the major force shaping this landscape. We don't always know what causes a rockfall in a particular event. Sometimes it's obvious in that uh, there might have been uh, a large rainstorm or snowstorm that then caused a lot of seepage and so we surmise that that seepage must have caused a rockfall. It's not always the case. Sometimes uh, rock falls happen without any known trigger, so it could just happen on a nice, bright, summer, sunny day. We had decided to rent bikes um, to ride around the valley. We were only here about an hour, and heard this loud, thunderous roar, and couldn't tell where the sound was coming from. And looked around, and I saw rocks falling off the wall over to my right. Whoa, a rock fall, look. I had to get my camera off the bike as quickly as I could. That's why the footage was a little shaky. Um, had to take the wide angle lens off of it and was lucky enough to catch the third rock fall. Look at that piece. In the particular rock fall that was captured on video, you can see a rock slab detaching from the cliff face, sort of skipping down the cliff face, hitting a prominent ledge, breaking up into a bunch of pieces. And some of those individual pieces are 40, 50 feet on a side. And those pieces then are uh, free falling through the air, spinning on their way down. They fall several hundred feet, and then they impact the talus slope at the bottom. Some of those huge boulders will be moving down the talus slope at 40, 50 miles an hour, snapping large trees like matchsticks and going all the way down to the base of the talus slope and the valley floor. Um, we're standing at the base of the rock fall that happened on August 26th of last year, 2009. Um, and this is one of the rocks that fell from it. I thought they were about that big you know, because we were about, I don't know, a half mile away. So they didn't seem that big. But now looking at it, they're, it's, they're huge. It's amazing to think that it came down from up there and then bounced, I guess. It must have bounced, right? And prior to August of 2009, this slope had large oak trees on it. But when several thousand tons of rock came down off the cliff and landed in this area and then moved down the talus slope, those boulders basically wiped out all of the trees that were on this slope. And this talus slope leads right down to the floor of Yosemite Valley. And just beyond the edge of the talus slope is the Iwani Hotel. If these rock falls were occurring in a remote valley, they would be of scientific interest only. But because these rock falls are occurring in Yosemite Valley, a narrow valley with nearly 4 million visitors a year, they are more than a spectacular natural process. 
depending on where and when a rockfall occurs, it can have potentially serious consequences. In 1971 and 1972, there were two large rockfalls that came off the face of Elephant Rock. This was the impact area for the March 1987 Middle Brother Rockfall. This is the impact area for the July 10th, 1996 Happy Isles Rockfall. This boulder here that I'm standing on, a roughly 400 ton boulder that came down in October of 2008. So this boulder here is an old rockfall boulder. And you can tell that this is an old rockfall boulder because it's covered in lichen and moss. It's not a fresh boulder. Now in contrast, this boulder here is fresh. It has no moss or lichen growing on it. And this boulder is just like those other boulders that came down from earlier rockfalls. The difference is when this boulder came down in October of 2008, these structures were here in Curry Village. And the consequences of that are obvious. A scary situation hitting visitors at Yosemite today. For the second time in as many days, a rock slide has hit the park's Curry Village area. We are getting some eyewitness accounts of that rock slide that hit this morning, sending people running and crying in fear. And there are some unconfirmed reports of injuries in that area. Now, we got some pictures from uh, KCRA 3 Live. Copter 3 HD was over the scene of that rock slide this morning that uh, took place at about 7 o'clock. Our primary concern is saving people's lives. Fifteen people have died from rock falls in Yosemite National Park in the last 150 years. And that's not an insignificant number. It is much smaller than the number of people that have died in Yosemite's streams and rivers, and it's certainly much smaller than the number of people that have died in traffic accidents. But one big rock fall at the wrong place in the wrong time um, could dramatically increase that number, and that's why we are focusing on learning everything we can about rock falls using laser scanning, computer modeling, monitoring of the cliffs. But the scope of trying to understand all of these complexities and all of these different rock faces to a point where we can start to predict rock falls is going to be really challenging. Predicting rock falls is a very difficult scientific question to go after. It's similar to predicting earthquakes. You know, rock falls can happen anytime, and so we're interested in uh, determining how often and when and potentially where. So much of what we know of the Yosemite landscape, the iconic cliffs of El Capitan and Half Dome, the forested talus slopes, the big boulders out on the floor of the valley, all of these features owe their existence to rock falls and rock falls have been occurring in Yosemite for thousands of years and they will continue for thousands more.